Hey, this is Lene Young. And I'm Joellen Tabor. And we're from Northside Middle School. In this video, you will see assessment strategies that we use in our collaborative classroom, both formative and summative. We hope that you really find this helpful. Backward design is when you take your unit test and you look at that at the beginning of your planning to make sure that you cover everything. Ms. Tabor, how do you and your collaborative teacher use your unit tests to guide your lessons? Well, a unit test is considered a summative test. And what that means is after all your teaching has been done, we can use a summative test to figure out if the students really did learn the information. So what we do at the beginning of our unit when we sit down and plan together, I'll bring my little notebook and we'll make sure that we look at the test that we gave last year. And we say, okay, we've got to make sure that we cover this, this, and this. And there are also notes that we've made on it. We like to sit down and make notes after each summative assessment to make sure that we understand what we liked and what we didn't like about this test so that we can change it if we'd like for the next year. Summative assessment should never just be an end-all be-all though. At the end of the test, we make sure that we use the information given to see if we need to give uh, students more help, if we need to do some more warm-ups in a certain area at the beginning of class for the next unit. Exit slip. called an exit ticket. This is to help me understand if you know what we did today. So, I want you to answer this question. What is the ratio of pencils to unicorns? And I want you to write it in all three ways. When I give you this piece of paper, you need to put your first and last name and then write it all three ways. The fraction does not have to be in simplest form because the directions did not say simplest form. ticket helped me to figure out which kids in class understood and which kids did not. So I have two groups that I separated my papers into. This group understands completely and this group had some things that were wrong. four or five kids that didn't have it correct in either a small group or one-on-one -on -one, or just as I walk around the room make sure I get to them more often on this subject. So it really helps you to narrow down in a very short amount of time who has it and who does not. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Would everybody go like this? Why don't you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you don't understand what we have just covered with ratios. If you, if you kind of get it, thumbs up, and I need a little more work, thumbs down. Just right here where nobody else can see, okay? So sometimes we do the thumbs up, thumbs down method, and that's just a real quick um, observation by the teacher that, that uh, we know whether or not a student understands. Um, we just say, hey, can I get a thumbs up or thumbs down as to who understood what we just talked about? And we try to keep it right on the body so that other students can't see because you can't really tell from the side or front to back um, if you're understanding it or not. Think, pair, share. Something I want you to think about real quick. I want you to take about 45 seconds and think about this question. What happens if I get a ratio and the top number is bigger than the bottom number and I need to reduce? Think about that. What happens if the top number is bigger than the bottom number and you need to reduce? Don't we have a special name for that? Bobblehead. Bobblehead, all right. Tell your neighbor what you're thinking. What do you do? Share with your neighbor what you thought. Ratio. 
How many numbers do you have to have if it's a ratio? Two numbers. Think about that when you're reducing. Talk to each other about Some people numbers. said that I could have this. Some people said I could have this. For ratios. Okay? What I want to know is, is this proper for ratios or is this proper for ratios? What did you and your partner come up with? Who's brave? Tell me what your partner said. Um, we did the bottom one because you can't do the top because it's only two numbers. Right? Right. A ratio is, what's the definition of ratio? Yes, sir. In comparison of two numbers and then the exact order. Or well, order matters, right. It has to be two numbers. Is this two numbers when we change it to a mixed number? No. no, now it's just one mixed number. It's not two numbers. So when you're reducing your ratios, leave them improper, but just make them as small as they can be. Okay. I also heard some of you say, just divide. What do you divide? Do you do long division? Do you divide on the side? What would you do? So when your answer to your partner was just divide, that didn't really tell you in detail what you needed to do. Because this is also a division, and so is this. So you needed to be a little more specific. Think about that in the next thing. Think pair share. share has its advantages and its disadvantages. One of the advantages is that you're getting the kids to talk to each other. Uh, so instead of getting on them for talking all the time, you give them an opportunity when it's okay to talk. Uh, a disadvantage is that sometimes you'll have kids that will just look and stare at each other. You know, we all have those kids where you just, you have to get them to talk and you're trying and you're trying and nothing you seem to do sort of gets them out of their shell. Well, inevitably you will have a group that just sort of stares at each other. You need to walk around the room and listen for that. And if so, you can join in and sort of help uh, facilitate that conversation. Also, you'll have those kids that go, oh, I, I learned that it was easy or it was fine. They don't really give you any explanation or really talk to each other, or get any meat, so, as I like to call it. What you can do is you walk around the room, you hear what's going on, you sort of try and stop at those tables and say, I want more from you. Or when you get back together as the large group after Think Pair Share is over, you can always ask, you know, some strategies. For example, um, um, why do you think that it's easy? Well, tell me some things more specifically that you learned that made it easy for you. So you sort of take it a step further. Independent work cards. These cards are what we use for independent working time. Um, while we're walking around the classroom, students can use whichever card suits their particular needs at that particular time. Um, if they've got it and they are working just fine, then they're going to show us this card. If they are so awesome, they can explain it, they're going to use this card. If they're, you know, slowly but surely, they're catching on, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, I think I'm getting this, then they're going to show us this card. These three cards are from when the students don't quite understand. Obviously, stop means, I need a teacher right now, please stop at my desk and help me. This one, exhausted, means... I have worked on this problem and worked on this problem until I'm completely exhausted from it and I just don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of the same as stop, but this means I've really tried my best and I'm just exhausted. I don't know what else to do. I've exhausted all the possibilities. And this last one is confused. Mm, I don't have it. I'm confused. I'm working on it, right? But I'm working on it means I understand I'm getting it. This one means I'm working on it, but I don't understand really what's going on. I'm a little confused about something. It's, these three cards mean that a teacher needs to stop at their desk and help them. You need some help. Okay, help now that I've that. helped you, mm -hmm. do you think you've got it? Yeah. All right. Okay, looks like you might need some help. Let me help you.
Student Response Board. The students are excited when they come in and see this on their desks. They really like this instead of using just a plain whiteboard with a dry erase marker because it has a little bit more of an option on here. In the center, they can use this part as their whiteboard. If they had a problem like three-fourths plus one-half, they could actually write it in the center and work it out. But sometimes we don't have them work out problems. We ask questions. Uh, we want them to explain things to each other. So sometimes it would just be a true-false question where they would either circle true or circle false. Sometimes we will have a yes-no question. Is this a rate? Yes or no? Yes no. That keeps them from yelling out answers, but they all get an opportunity to show their answer individually, and we can see it when they Sometimes show it to us. Sometimes we play Jeopardy and other games, and that's where the ABCD comes in. If you're unable to get the eggs for active votes, this is a real quick method that they can use to circle their answers. Um, this board, we this design, we actually picked up from a collaborative um, meeting that we had in Roanoke and it, we've just been able to run wild with this and the kids like we said earlier love to see this on their table and they know it's going to allow for um, discussions with their partners, discussions in small groups and then a quick easy access for us to see who's got the right answer and who doesn't. Moving to the music. Sometimes we need to get the kids out of their seats so if we've just had a quick lesson we want to know who's understanding what and see where they are within the lesson, um, we pause and have uh, play a little crazy music, maybe music they aren't used to, um, and we ask them some questions that have to do with each lesson. As you can see here, um, we'll already have them answer the questions ahead of time, maybe quickly on their paper, and then they're going to find a partner and discuss with them question number one when the music starts. When it stops, they'll find two partners and discuss question two, move with the music and when the music stops find three partners and discuss question number three and there's a lot of variations and modifications that you can make with this on your second question you're going to find two people and tell them the answer to your number two question when the music stops find a partner and give them two answers to question number two find two people give them your answer to question number two <laughs> Whip around. Whip around is a really, really fun strategy that we like to use in class whenever we have a few minutes. Sometimes we do it in small groups. We just sort of pick a few students that we need to pull out and make sure that they understand what they've learned for the day. Uh, you can modify this by using a ball, but it's really cool because the teacher poses a question, the student throws the ball to another student, you ask another question, and the students answer as quickly as they possibly can. This is a really fun way for the students and for the teacher to really figure out if they understand the information. It's better than a worksheet. Throw the ball. Anyway. What is a ratio? T a fraction? Yes, it can One be written as a fraction. Good. Uh, Twelve. Yes, throw the ball. True or false? One meter is a little longer than a yard. True. Yes, throw the ball. Which is bigger, a centimeter or an inch? Inch. Yes, throw the ball. Seventeen. We're going faster. Uh, true or false? A kilometer is bigger than a centimeter. True, very good. Number 18. True or false? There are 16 ounces in one pound. True? True, very good. Number 19. I love math. True or false? True. Yes, true. Everyone, I love math. True. true. Benchmark analysis. What's the difference between a formative assessment and a summative assessment? A formative assessment is usually done while you're teaching. It's strategies and things that you can use to figure out if the students are learning at a good rate or at a good pace or correctly. 
A summative assessment is done usually at the end. It's what most people call their unit test or their end of course test or their benchmark test. At the end testing. of each nine weeks, our county does something called a benchmark test or a formative assessment. And it assesses everything that they've done for one nine week period. Uh, we use that information to sort of fill in the gaps and figure out where are the kids struggling and what kind of strategies can we use to remediate or to get them better for the summative SOL assessment. It's important to note that all of our summative assessments end up being formative assessments. We never just give a test and then that's it. We usually look at the test, we analyze it, we see what kind of things they still need, and then we use some of the strategies that we've been talking about in this video to help us um, you know, further their, their knowledge and their, their understanding. This is a printout of the benchmark test and how each student answered every question. What my collaborative teacher and I do is we highlight the ones that were most missed and we make sure we discuss those as a class and then we go through and bring in some of the other ones we want to make sure we hit the highlights on. We also go through and discuss with each student individually the most missed questions and the individual questions that they missed. This is called the benchmark analysis where we go through and we examine our classes as a whole group and um, we look for the good things and the bad things and um, which SOLs do we need to cover more deeply and which ones, you know what, our kids got this. Um, it really, uh, it helps us out a lot. Um, as you can see, we have the pass rate, our failure rate, um, according to the cut score, and then um, each one of our classes individually if needed. Um, you can see on here uh, we expected our second block to do much better because it is not a collaborative class. And then I just put the percentages of the things that um, we probably need to work on. This did well. So you'll want to find the good and the bad. Um, in further detail, we can look at each individual question, find the distractor. Is that the one that they picked? Um, why did my students answer the way they did? Um, was it the TEI questions that gave them a hard time? I can see that there are two TEI questions that were, you know, definitely we need to have more practice with. Um, it, it's identified by the SOL, the kind of question, and what kind of answers were they choosing for each one. A further evaluation, we just made a list of the most missed questions to make sure because it was individualized per class. Our plan of action, what are we going to do to incorporate this um, relearning into the classroom? Um, we are going to do the most missed, we're going to do warm-ups, um, individual remediation with every student during IXL time or just while we're doing something in the classroom. Um, Long-term goals, continue to review all SOLs, um, we want to do blast from the past that we on want to add to our tests and quizzes. After looking at the benchmark assessment, this is when we pull in our strategies that we've talked about so far. We'll pull some of the most missed questions and maybe use this particular uh, whiteboard to help us figure out where do they go wrong, how can we talk about it in class to better understand it. We can use these cards as they're working on their most missed questions or working individually. I'm exhausted, I've done the best I can, but uh, I just can't figure it out. Or I've got it this time, I think I've worked it out. After we give a summative assessment, it turns into a formative assessment. What we do is we take the students who did well on that and we create extension activities, usually on the computer. And then we'll also take the students who need remediation and we'll figure out something to do with them. There are many different co-teaching models to do with that. Um, we could do parallel teaching, we could do some stations where we have some extension activities and remediation activities. But what we like to do is go into the computer lab. The kids love to go in there, as we all know. So we have some students with extension activities on the outskirts, on the computers, and then we'll pull in two small groups at one end of each table and either do error analysis on the test that is in question or just some more remediation that um, helps them better understand and show us their knowledge. There are many other types of formative and summative assessments that include performance tasks, project-based learning, 
um, activities that are using concrete materials and other things. We've shown you just a few in this video. Um, assessments can be planned, unplanned, formal, informal, and most definitely ongoing. Get creative. Try something new. Try a new form of assessment in your next unit. Thank you.